So I would say since 2018, the biggest knock on the iPad Pro has been that the hardware is leaps and bounds better than the software and that the software like iPadOS is holding it back. But over the last six years, I've done my best to debunk that by showing people how I personally use my iPad Pro as my main computer and how in certain situations, depending on who you are, it is actually much better than macOS and much more productive than a regular desktop experience. So in this video, what I wanna do is peel back the curtain a little bit because what people say is the iPad Pro's biggest Achilles heel is actually what makes it the most productive computer on the market. So let's talk about the iPad Pro, why it's productive, and some of the applications that I use on the productivity side to really leverage the iPad Pro power to get you from point A to point B. Let's get into it. So before we get into all the different applications that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, I wanna talk about the iPad Pro and iPad OS and the state of everything that's going on because a lot of people, they just want Mac OS on the iPad Pro because they think, hey, it has the hardware, it can physically probably run Mac OS pretty well, and it would just make it a little bit more familiar for everybody to wanna to use the iPad Pro over, let's say, something like a traditional MacBook Air or even a MacBook Pro. And to those people, I would say that, yes, it could probably be done, but I don't think that's what Apple wants, and that's not what I personally want either. I do not want just a ported over version of Mac OS to run on my iPad Pro. I actually enjoy iPad OS 17.5, iPad OS 18 is bringing some nice quality of life updates from a customization standpoint. And the biggest thing that I think separates the iPad Pro from something like Mac OS is going to be its actual Achilles heel, right? Everybody says that iPad OS multitasking isn't the best, that iPad OS is actually a step down from Mac OS from a productivity and power standpoint. And I would argue the opposite, right? Because of the fact that multitasking is a little bit tougher, I guess, or a little bit more inconvenient than it would be on something like a Mac OS computer, it actually makes me much more productive on the iPad Pro than I would on Mac OS. For instance, it's so easy to open eight to 12 to 16 different applications with multiple tabs open at the same time and kind of just be bombarded with distraction, whether it is a Spotify that's open, a YouTube, a word processor, Notion, all your different productivity apps, all the different elements of your actual desktop, all that causes a lot more distraction, at least for me personally. It kind of induces procrastination. It makes me kind of go from different application to different application. And at the end of the day, I'll spend two hours doing something that could have taken me maybe only 30 minutes because of the fact that it's so easy to multitask. Now, again, some people need all that multitasking. Some people need to be able to have free flowing windows that easily and that familiar and that fluidly. But if you're somebody that just needs to live inside of one app or two apps, the iPad Pro is the single app productivity machine and workhorse because when I get into the iPad Pro, when I get into iPad OS and I open up something like LumaFusion or like Sunsama or like Notion, I know that I'm going to be in those applications and there's going to be very little distraction because it's physically more difficult to open and manipulate different applications. Now you do have things like Stage Manager, which allows you to open up up to four different applications and kind of have a little bit more of a windowed mode and free flowing windows. So for the people that need to use Stage Manager, it's there and it works well. And I actually like the free flowing nature of it. And it's not like Mac OS, but it's enough like Mac OS where it does feel familiar and it does give you that feeling of multitasking with multiple windows. But if you're somebody that just needs to get one thing done, like edit a video with zero distraction, or edit a podcast, or edit a thumbnail, or just get a word processing done, or just answer emails. The fact that multitasking isn't the iPad strong suit is actually beneficial to somebody that gets very easily distracted like myself. So that's why I always think when people say that the Achilles heel of the iPad is its lack of productivity and lack of multitasking, it's actually its superpower because it has all that internal power already. So it can run those single very high intensity tasks very easily because it's just powering through them because we only have one thing going on at a time. And again, I think that's the iPad superpower, but let me know in the comment down below what you think about that overall sentiment of the iPad Pro being the ultimate single application machine. So now let's get into the actual applications that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is Sunsama. And they were actually nice enough to sponsor this portion of the video. And what I love about that is that I've been actually a paying customer of Sunsama since around 2020. And I use it for both personal and business use. And it's been one of my favorite daily task planners and task management platforms that I've used so far. So Sunsama on the surface of it is a daily management software for tasks and different to-dos and things like that but it's got a couple of different things up its sleeve. So firstly, it focuses on mental clarity and then overall achievement satisfaction. So basically on a daily basis, it's gonna ask you exactly what you need to get done for that day to really plan out your day from beginning to end. And then as you go and progress through your day and check these off, it puts you into these focus modes that are actually live activity time. And then when you get to the end of the day, it asks you to reflect on what you've done that day for about two to three minutes. And then the UI and the drag and drop aspect and nature of Sunsama is what really sets this thing apart from everything else. So for instance, you can see that for my week, it's very front loaded on a Monday and Tuesday, 
because I like to front load everything and put as much as I can on that Monday because when I get to the end of the day and I realize, hey, I didn't get to this or I didn't get to the other aspect, I can either just drag it over to the next day or further on for that week. So you can see that at the end of the week, my actual calendar looks a little bit more leveled off because of the fact that I kind of separated it off and I tried to do as much as I could on day one. And another nice cherry on top is that it integrates with all the major different players. So you can attach your Gmail, sign into your Notion, into your Teams, into your Slack, and into a bunch of other different project management softwares. And what I like about this is that when you do integrate to it, and let's say you have a task on one of those through work or maybe an email that you want to touch on, you can just drag that email over into your calendar and it turns into a task into Sunsama that you're going to end up dealing with on that day on that part of your calendar. So I love that aspect, all the easy integrations that you get with Sunsama. And then of course, you do also have some other AI aspects. Now what I like about the integration and the implementation of AI in here is that it's not a huge feature. It's not the end all be all. It's kind of just there to help you out at the end of the day to save you a little bit more time. So if you're in the market for a new task management software and you're looking to kind of get into something new that has beautiful UI, it's easy to use, integrates with all of your different applications, I definitely recommend giving Sunsama a try. They do have a 14 day free trial. And what I love about it is that you don't actually need to pay upfront or put your credit card information in. So if you, after the 14 days don't like it, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to remember to like cancel that membership via the app store because you don't like it or you don't want to be accidentally charged. But after you do use it, I know you're going to end up liking it. And it is $16 a month for those people that do want to go on and end up using Sunsama on a full-time basis. And for me, it's been extremely productive and I wouldn't go any other place for a productivity software, at least from a personal and business combination use. So first look in the description to try out Sunsama. Big thank you to them for partnering up with 9to5Mac. It's awesome for them to come full circle and be able to kind of sponsor a video like this. But now onto the next one. So as I mentioned, I use Sunsama for my personal database. It's a combination of what I need to do for work and all the tasks I need to accomplish. So when it comes to just a work focus thing where I need to show everybody what I'm doing, not just myself, but kind of have a collaborative kind of setting, we do use Notion. Now we do have a nice Notion dashboard and I'm not an expert in Notion and I didn't create the dashboard that we use, but if you do already have a created dashboard, it is very easy to use and it's free flowing. I love the widgets that come with iPad OS and kind of being able to collaborate in real time. Now, I know that there's a lot of softwares out there where you can collaborate in real time and it's easy to use, but something about Notion and the minimalistic nature of it and how everything kind of breaks down into different pages and it's just very easy to use once it is all set up. I've been a big fan of Notion and the fact that it integrates with Sunsama is even better. So this is where you start to kind of spit out brainstorming ideas, you know, podcast notes, video schedules, things of that nature. So we're able to kind of see in real time between myself and Jeff, for instance, when videos are going up, making sure we're not stepping on each other's toes. So it's a great collaborative software if you do have a Notion set up already. So I'm a big fan of Notion. The widgets are awesome on iPad OS. They're easy to kind of integrate into and they do have a live widget. So I kind of have my main menu on there. And if I want to go to the dashboard, I tap on the dashboard. If I want to go to the brainstorming section, I can just go there. It's easy to kind of take notes in real time. And then for instance, like I mentioned, this is where we do all of our podcast notes dump and all the links that we use. So whenever we are actually talking about something, we just have it on the ready and easy to access inside of the actual Notion application. So the next application that I want to bring up is called Focused OS. And this is a very simple indie application and it does exactly what it's meant to do. And it's meant to, when you turn it on, to help you focus on the task at hand. And that's exactly what this does by actually blocking the applications that you actually list in order to not be able to use them. So basically what this does, and I will say that this is an iPhone application, but obviously you can put it on your iPad. It just doesn't have an iPad interface. It just has kind of like that small window feature, which hopefully does change in the future. But the utility is so good that I had to put it on my iPad. And you basically set up different focus modes, very similar to how you do natively in the focus mode settings of your actual iPhone or iPad itself. And basically you list out applications or category of applications that you want blocked when this mode is turned on. And then you also have some options in terms of what different white noise you want. So for instance, when I'm writing articles in WordPress on my iPad, I turn on my article writing mode. It blocks applications like Twitter and YouTube and YouTube Studio. And basically all the applications that I can just quickly get distracted from and what it physically does is that when you, let's say, leave your application that you're actually working on and you click on something like Twitter, it's actually going to put a big watermark over it saying like, hey, you can't use it until you turn off the actual focus mode through Focus OS. So very simple application. It's more so a utility than anything else. And I absolutely love it. There is a Mac OS version as well, as well as an iOS. And like I said, the iOS version is what's being used on iPad OS, but it works exactly how you want it to work by blocking out all those applications that just distract you and are there for no reason when you are trying to get some work done. The next application we're going to talk about is ChatGPT. This one's very self-explanatory, but I will say that I use it very simply, right? I don't really push it to the 10th extreme. Like I know a lot of people are using it in crazy scenarios that really kind of amplify and show off what AI can do. But for me, it's very simple. I use it to kind of proofread different articles. I also ask it for SEO tags and things like that. So, so that's kind of how I use ChatGPT. It's in a very simplistic way in a very kind of level one, maybe level two way. 
as opposed to people that are using ChatGPT at level 100, right? But that's just how I personally use it, but I do use it pretty frequently, so I wanted to add it in here because it does help me from an efficiency standpoint by not sitting there and mulling over non-important things like a title that I would sometimes spend 15 to 30 minutes on just thinking of a title. Here, I just kind of put some keywords together, put it into ChatGPT, it gives me a few options, and it really reduces the amount of time that I spend thinking about a title or keyword generation and things like that. Now, these next two applications are more so the creative applications that I use to actually get my videos done. They're not really productivity applications, but I do want to bring them up as options for those people in the creative world. So first and foremost is LumaFusion. I've been using it since about 2018 on the 2015 iPad Pro, and it works extremely well. And paired with the M4 iPad Pro and the processor, it just absolutely flies. Everything that I throw at it, I use 4K 30 and 4K 60 footage. It can support up to six audio and six video ones. Although with LumaFusion 5.0, I hear it's gonna be much, much more. And overall, it's just an amazing software and great product. And the price to performance ratio makes it that much better. Right now, I believe it is $40, but they do run some promotions like on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. They reduce it sometimes to $20. So if you're looking for a video editing software that's very professional and gives you more than something like iMovie, but you don't wanna spend a subscription of Final Cut Pro 2, then LumaFusion is the way to go. And even with their in-app purchases for multicam and things like that, the most most that you're gonna spend, I believe is like $80 or $90 with, and again, it's a one-time purchase versus the $5 a month that you have to pay for Final Cut Pro 2, which I did play with and it does have some cool features, but overall, LumaFusion has just been around for a long longer and has way more familiar features overall than you would on something like Final Cut Pro 2. And then my Photoshop equivalent for my thumbnail editing is Affinity Photo 2. That's what I use for all my thumbnails, for all my photo editing, for all my photo creation, and for all my featured image creation for my actual article posts. So definitely check it out if you're looking for a Photoshop alternative. That's also a one-time purchase. And it does open Photoshop as well as Adobe Illustrator files very easily by separating all the layers of that file. And you can export it in those same files as well, which I absolutely love. And then the last two applications that I'm gonna bring up for productivity are actually native Apple applications. And where everything starts from a creative standpoint for me personally is in the Notes app. That is where the rawest form of ideas and the rawest forms of videos and you know note taking is all done. And I've tried different Notes applications that are third party ones. And I always just end up coming back to the Notes application because yes, there maybe are Notes apps out there that have a little bit more from a feature set standpoint, but overall the ease of use, how well it works with the Apple Pencil, the now added features of iPadOS 18, like like being able to just handwrite and then turn that into actual type text or turning your handwriting just a little bit neater so it's more legible. It's just very easy to use, it's very self-explanatory. It has all the basic necessary tools to get some note-taking done, to get some kind of thumbnail ideation done, and it just works across all of your devices. So you know that no matter what, it'll be on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your Mac computer, and it'll show up wherever you do have an iDevice and you're logged into your iCloud. So. The Apple Notes application is kind of the step 1A that I would always start with whenever I'm creating videos or when I have any idea for that matter. Even if it is on the personal side, if I want to have an idea down and not forget about it, I just open up the Notes application and jot it down real quick and then come back to it at a later date. And then lastly, I recently made the switch back over to the native Apple Mail app. I was using the Gmail application before, but it got too convoluted and too annoying to kind of handle and organize. And I am waiting for the new iPadOS 18 Beta 2 update to come out so we get the new mail updates for differentiation across different inboxes and different email types. But overall, I've been very happy with the Mail app. It works very well on iPadOS. I haven't had any complaints. It's very easy to organize. And once I got used to kind of the layout and the structure of it, it's very easy to kind of organize yourself and kind of see exactly what you see fit. And the search functionality is actually very robust as well. But those are the applications I'd like to use on this beloved M4 iPad Pro, and it's made me ultra productive over the years. So that will just about do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, my iPad Pro is my favorite computer. It is the computer that I use most often. It is the computer that I use to get all my work done from both a personal standpoint and an actual business and work standpoint. It's my favorite form factor. It's the most fun computer to use. And overall, I'm just a big advocate for it. Now, yes, for some people, the iPad Pro will not be enough or will be having some missing features or maybe some applications don't work as they would on the desktop side. But for the most part, as long as you know that your workflow can get done on an iPad Pro, the iPad Pro is the way to go. And in my opinion, they last longer than Mac computers because think about it, the 2018 iPad Pro is still going to get iPadOS 18. And my wife, for instance, still uses her 2018 iPad Pro on a daily basis. So let me know in the comment down below what you think. Big thank you to Sunsama for sponsoring this video and partnering up with 9to5Mac. Like I said, their information will be linked down below. Give it a try. There's a 14-day free trial like I mentioned. But that will do it for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below if you made it to the end. And YouTube thinks that you're actually going to enjoy this video right here, so definitely check that one out. And if not, click on the other video. But until next time, everybody, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.